Yeah, Beautiful. we are we are live. Scott well, and Bart. Yes. Well, I don't know if we've said that yet today for those watching that oh, don't that's know. That's a good point. I'm Scott. I'm Bart. <laughs> How are you, Bart? I'm Devin. <laughs> hey, Devin. Hour What's seven that? of the 12 hour second annual 12 hours of boom. We're clicking right along here. Yes. All over social media, Instagram, Twitter. Mm -hmm. I see this book, Canadian Whiskey. Yes. It's written by Davin de Kurgamo. Famous author. We said, let's see if we can get him on for the 12 hours boom and learn a little something about boom. Canadian whiskey. That's right. And he's here. He is. <laughs> a lot of people know Davin and we're excited that we had you coming on. Uh, really? Lots. Yeah. Well, the, people, I think the, lot first, of the first time I heard your name was with Whiskey Lassie even, I think, right? I think so too. Yeah. Yep. Joanne McInnes. Yeah. So go ahead, Davin, uh, for those that are watching, introduce yourself and uh, introduce your book. Yes, we'll oh, talk more. Yeah. Well, you, you pronounced my name correctly, but I'll say it again. Davin de Kurgamo. I've been uh, writing about whiskey now for oh, about 20 years. I started with the Malt Maniacs back in the very early days of the Malt Maniacs. And of course it was all just single malt scotch. And so I think I've published like 2,000 or more tasting notes for single malt uh, scotch. Uh, but, you know, I live in Canada and I started, uh, you know, driving past the distilleries and then getting curious. And then I started taking notes on them. And then I started, you know, getting, reading about them deeper and deeper. And I realized, you know, there, people don't know squat about Canadian whiskey and what they do think they know is completely wrong. So I started making notes and I have a binder on each of the distilleries, including the closed distilleries. And uh, my daughter said, you know, Dad, you're writing a book. So that's what I did. You know, I uh, sat down and wrote the book and, uh, you know, got published by Will McClellan and Stewart, which is like the uh, most Canadian publisher. It's the most prestigious publisher in Canada. And uh, now it's on uh, in second edition, quite uh, significantly revised and updated it on Appetite by Random House. So it's uh, and it's doing really uh, quite well now. We're quite happy with that. So it's kind of been a, a bit of a journey. And I, I've never lost my taste for single malt scotch, but my wallet has become less and less interested in single malt scotch. And, you know, like, think of like something like Canadian Club 40 year old, which you can buy for $200. And it tastes every bit as good as the Glenfiddich, sorry, Jenny, the Glenfiddich 40 year old, which is $6,000. Okay, so you can buy the Glenfiddich 40 year old, and it's a wonderful dram. Or you can buy 30 bottles of the Canadian Club 40 year old, which is equally as good. And you, you're either way, you're out 6,000 bucks. So yeah, I, it's Canadian whiskey is a fabulous bargain and um, you know we really have some great whiskeys here and you know so so i just kind of followed my nose on that and you know but I, I haven't forgot about the other stuff i love some of the new bourbons i really enjoy some of the new bourbons and in fact one of my favorite whiskeys is rittenhouse 100 an american whiskey um the the japanese whiskeys are hey cavalan Cool. Yes, you know, they're good. And, and, and Amrit, Amrit from India. So uh, I guess I'm just like a, you know, a, a real whiskey guy. But my passion yeah. now is for Canadian whiskey. Huh? Well, Canadian we, whiskey's blowing up too. Go ahead. Sorry. We, we've, we've, we've heard from a few people, not necessarily negative, but just, you know, Canadian whiskey isn't all that. But they're wrong. And I've said a few times, a lot of the good stuff that you got, you keep in Canada, doesn't make it out of Canada. And you say that in your book. Lot 40 cast strength. Well, you know, it's, it's really true. A lot of it does not make it out of Canada, but there are some misconceptions about that. I mean, if you look at American whiskey, most of it is not very good, but that's not the stuff people talk about. People talk about the high end stuff. If you look at scotch, most of it is just, is really just mixing whiskey. But people talk about the top 5% and they think that represents all scotch. Well, most American whiskey is not bourbon. Most scotch is not single malt. And most of the, uh, of the really high-end Canadian whiskeys are kind of, I mean, they're not in the pipeline like the other stuff. You know, there's a, there's a lot of pipeline whiskey. But, you know, back in the 80s, all the different whiskey styles went light because people were drinking vodka. They wanted light whiskey, so we have light scotches. Right. Most of the scotches were light for mixing. Most of the American whiskeys light for drinking, and the same with Canadian. The only difference is people think 
and thought that Canadian, that that represented all Canadian whiskey, that it's all white. But man, you go back to the 70s, 80s, 60s, and Canadian whiskey was every bit as robust as the biggest whiskeys that are coming out of Canada right now and the big, the big bourbon. So it's just kind of been, you know, Canadians don't, we don't talk much about ourselves. We don't brag about ourselves. And, you know, yeah, let's be honest. We have some wonderful whiskey up here and we quite enjoy having it. Well, uh, let me <laughs> clarify. Stock, stock and barrel. It's uh, delicious. Hello. Real quick, Whiskey Jason points out, or he says, whiskey of, most American whiskey is not bourbon, question mark, exclamation mark, from what you said. <laughs> what you're referring to, probably a lot of what is sold when you look at cheaper whiskeys. Grain alcohol. Uh, yeah, they're made with grain alcohol or they're not labeled bourbon. Look at quantity-wise of what whiskeys are sold. Most of them probably aren't bourbons. Yeah, most people don't shop at the high end. Right. Whiskey is one of the most price sensitive uh, uh, commodities out there. Most people buy the cheapest. Mm -hmm. Most people who buy it. And it's those brands that you and I would never put to our lips that keep the distilleries open. You know, yeah. so, you know, we, we, it just, it's just uh, there are very few distilleries that don't have some some bottom shelf blends to keep them going. And that's where the majority of their, of their whiskey is going as well. So we got to do a little cowbell here for a super, here we are. super chat that came in from Mark's whiskey whistle. And he says to ask you about, you know, this is funny. We yes, were just talking about this, this is perfect. Ask you about your private stock of hand select barrel. And he says, hi, Davin. Hi, Mark. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, the, to me, we, we done several, uh, crown Royals and the hand select barrel to me stood out. I really like that one, oh, but yeah. you have your own private bottling yes. of that, don't you, Devin? Yes, I do. And you know, I, I, I was just beside myself when they said, we'd like to do a, a private bottling of, of crown Royal and put your name on the bottle and then send it out to all your friends in the media. So I, I, I was just being in my office a week or two ago and yes, Mark, I still do have more than a case left. <laughs> but the, this is, this is wonderful coffee rye. It comes from that, that coffee so that they only run for two weeks of the year and every barrel is different. Now I did a tasting of hand select, hand select barrel in, in Houston, and a couple of years ago with my with my friend uh, George Jeff, his name on, uh, on social media. And we tried six different ones. Mine obviously was the winner. <coughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> but some of them were, they, they just taste like bourbon. Some of them just taste like American rye. And then there's a whole range of flavors in between. It's, it's, a, it's a really special, really special whiskey. I'm not sure if you can find it outside of Texas, except in my office. But uh, yeah, I, I, I was just like, and so they, I went out to the distillery, which is in Winnipeg. Mark knows it's north of, north of your home, Mark. And it, it, it's in um, Gimli, Manitoba. And it was winter time. And I tasted all these whiskeys and, you know, slowly eliminating some until finally we got down to the last few. And the, there was a, a guy there, Dwayne Kozlowski, who was running the, the distillery at the time. He, ma he makes bullet bourbon now, but he was making Crown Royal back then. And um, and there were two, and I couldn't go back. I was going back and forth, and he was giving me his input. And finally, I selected this one, and then of course I sat there and bit my fingernails until it came out, <laughs> and it was fabulous. And um, the uh, people who got this bottle—it was never sold; it was always just given away free. People who got this bottle were really quite complimentary of it. So it's uh, it's a really uh, it's a really special whiskey, and yeah, I'm very proud of that. It's. Uh, it was one of the great experiences of my life. And I have to say Crown Royal is a really good, uh, solid brand of Canadian whiskey. It's the best selling whiskey, uh, Canadian whiskey. And I think it's the second best selling whiskey of all in uh, America too. I think only Jack Daniels sells more than Crown Royal. Hmm. They, talk about serious. they would be up there high, I would imagine. So. Yeah. Well, I, I think they're like, like 2.3 million barrels sitting in their warehouses. I really liked when they opened up with the Noble Collection, though, when they started yeah. doing that. Because uh, and then um, even with the uh, Northern Harvest Rye, I mean, that was one that we I came across kind of by accident, yeah. and uh, I didn't expect much, um, just out of ignorance. And then I opened it and had it, and this is before it was in the whiskey bible and everything. And I was like, wow, 
I mean, I really got a lot of good flavor out of that out of that uh, winter winter rye. Yeah, that's really exciting, that whiskey. And I just love it because, you know, when it got into the whiskey Bible, immediately a lot of kind of whiskey snobs, they started slagging it and saying that it's not that good, mediocre and things like this. I thought, this is really funny because I poured it blind for a lot of people, including some of the people who said it was mediocre. And they just were, they just loved it. They thought this was fabulous whiskey. So it had nothing to do with the whiskey. They just didn't like the idea that there was a Canadian whiskey that had been named the best whiskey in the world. Ah, too bad. <laughs> I love it. You're right. You love it. And it, and if people don't know that that's what they're drinking, they love it too. It's, uh, it's, it really, it, and it has done so much for Canadian whiskey. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, really, that Crown Royal Northern Harvest Rye really, really brought Canadian whiskey a whole incremental step forward globally, globally. And uh, it, it, it's really, a, it really is a, a, a a, a wonderful whiskey and it has done so much to open people's eyes to how much great whiskey there is in Canada. And I can I can already tell we're gonna have to have Davin back because 45 oh, minutes yeah. isn't gonna yeah, be yeah, enough we're gonna have, for but Davin. It's, but it's so approachable too and well I'll, I'll have I'll have co-workers come to me and say hey we know you like whiskey and you got a show thing and they don't they don't know the show they just know about it and they're like tell me something that I can go try because I've got a a little party or something coming together and I want, and I'm, and I, I can tell, you know, I'm not going to send them away with something from Isla. And I'm like, you've got to go get this Northern harvest rye from crown Royal. It's affordable. It's very delicious. It's a rye that's smooth and not overly spicy. And they're like, really? And I, to this day, I have yet to have someone come back and go, ah, bad call. They're all like, that was great. My friend bought a bottle as well after trying it. So that's so part of that. It's so, it's so approachable. And then I think they think I'm going to tell them to go get some $100 bottle in order to get quality. I'm like, no, you don't have to spend that much to get that good tasting quality. Yeah. I don't know how much it costs down there, but in Canada, it's about $35 a bottle, which is very, very inexpensive for a bottle of whiskey. The thing about a Northern Harvest Rye, uh, you, you can pour this and you can drink it and sip it and enjoy it. You can, really can as a sipping whiskey, yes. really like a connoisseur whiskey. But if you want to, it's just as good over ice and it's just as good in a mixed drink. 18 it's to $20 over. down here, 18 to $20. Yeah. And you know, it's 90% rye grain whiskey. 90% rye grain whiskey. That's good. That's, it's phenomenal. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. well, and, and on to your book, well, I think, uh, so a couple of things just right off the bat that I really enjoyed, and I knew a little bit, but it was the depth of detail you went into, is how Canadian whiskey is different, how they're, 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 they're really unique blends. And correct me if I say anything wrong, they're not like a mash bill. It's like we have this rye and we have this barley, and then they're married together. Did I say that well? I know you say it so much better. Yeah, that's, a, that, 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 that's exactly what we do in most of the distilleries in Canada. The barley is distilled and matured separately in barrels that are specifically for barley. The rye is, is distilled independently and matured in barrels for rye. Same with the corn and the wheat and so on. And then we bring them together and they might not all mature at the same rate. So they might be different ages when they're brought together because they, they're brought together at the peak of perfection for the flavors that they want to get for that blend. So they bring them all together. So I say, you know, in, in America, they blend the grains before they distill them in a mash bill. In Canada, we blend the grains after we mature them. Now, I should say that that Crown Royal is one distillery that does sort of a hybrid. They do some of that, but they also use a mash bill to make uh, two of their whiskeys. They they use a mash bill to make a whiskey that, and if they distill it in the in the in the coffee still, they call it coffee rye. Mm. And and if they distill it in the in the uh, bourbon still. They call it bourbon style, and it, the bourbon style tastes like bourbon. The the coffee rye tastes like American rye, and it's it it, it's, it, it shows that it's, it's a lot more than just the grain that can makes the flavor. How it is distilled is truly truly significant, and uh, by using different stills, they can get different flavors from the very identical mash bill. In fact, they might run it both directions at the same time. Hmm. So it's, it's really, and, and this is something that, that you know, it, it 
it's it kind it, uh, it it's kind of hard to, to get people because you know as as humans we like to have the simplest possible explanation and brand ambassadors good at this and so i've heard them say never tell them more than five things there are five points about this whiskey that defines it and one of the things that they always say is it's got this percentage of rye well the percentage of rye doesn't mean anything if unless all of the other aspects are kept the same and don livermore is the guy who said it best it's not how much rye it's how it's distilled in canada we have this wonderful wonderful mixing whiskey a cowboy whiskey it's called alberta premium it's 100 percent rye grain nothing else and nobody can detect the typical rye notes in that because they've deliberately distilled those out then you take lot number 40 which is made with 100% rye grain in a different distillery, by the way. And they put it, they run it through a beer still, then they put it into a copper pot and they concentrate those flavors so that if, if you taste Lot 40 and Alberta Premium, you'll say these are both good whiskeys, but you have no, no concept that they come from essentially the same basic um, uh, grain bill. Different mm -hmm. distillery, so it's different varieties of rye, but just the same. And so, you know, it's it, 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 it's really quite, there, it's so much more complex than people think. But whiskey is just, you can never stop learning. If you, you, know, you keep asking questions, and every year you realize there's a little bit less that you know. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, even I didn't, I didn't realize they could take, you know, the same mash bill, run it through two different stills, and get two different flavor profiles from it. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Well. I'll give you another example of really close Alberta premium identical grain bill for Alberta premium and for whistle pig. The two whiskeys are night and day. They're entirely different because they're distilled differently and they're matured differently. So, huh. yeah. Beautiful. Well, and, here, and, and, and in Canadian whiskey, your, your book, the new portable expert, you also go into great detail on the major distilleries in Canada and how they started how they progressed, um, and that too. I mean, there and even the photos. Did you select these photos, or was this the the publisher? Because you get, I love history, and I just would get lost in some of these photos just looking at these old guys. That uh, not old guys are young then, but uh, you know, <laughs> you know, eighty years ago, and and even what they're wearing hundred years ago. I found that photo that you're looking at right now. It was printed on a piece of wood. And I found that in a historical society archive and you have to phone up and make an appointment and you can only go visit them on Sunday. And it's, it's just like, it, it's really, and it's just run by people who are interested in their community. So many things like that. And a lot of that has been lost uh, even just since I wrote the book. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, all those photos, I collected them myself. And Jane Cameron, my friend in Alberta, took a lot of the uh, photos that are in, um, that are inside the distilleries. But uh, yeah, I collected those photos one by one. And if you look at the back, you'll see there's credit given for every photo. That's the okay. publisher insists the photographer yeah. be identified. Yeah, because you have here staff at Weiser's Distillery and the, the chap that's got the chair tipped and he's got his knee on it a little bit. And I'm like, <laughs> what's the story? Is he just stylish or has he got a bad hip? I'm like, this is phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you have a quick yeah. Cowbell. Cowbell, shout out to Jason Fisk. Good getting Davin on. Oh, Canada, he says. Oh, Canada. And I'm pretty <laughs> sure Jason Fisk was just in London, though, in Milroy's bar having a drink with Jason Whiskey Wise and Eric Waite. Wasn't that Jason Fisk? I'm pretty sure it was. I don't know. Wherever you are, Jason. Canadian, oh, living in, Canadian living in uh, London. Uh, let's So... Most of the, or not most, some of the good whiskeys are kept in Canada. Some are released in the States before Canada gets them, yes. which has happened on several occasions, <laughs> several times. And it's happened with both of these. Hey, what, what do you know about that, Gavin, Davin? Well, yeah, I think that the biggest market in the world for Crown Royal is Texas. And they service that market because they're, they have a lot of very, very loyal customers there and so yes they get some of the whiskeys there before we get them up here and that's a crown royal bourbon mash which is a, i think a wonderful whiskey it's now called crown royal blenders mash because some people didn't like the word bourbon on the label 
Um, it, yeah, it was released first in the States. And uh, in the city, you know, that's that's where the big market is. And in Canada, they know when they release them here that people are going to buy them. It, Crown Royal is a phenomenally popular whiskey in, in Canada as well. So, uh, yeah, they, they, they service their market. It's just like anybody takes care of their best customers first. <laughs> Because I know even the Northern Harvest, the uh, Northern Harvest Drive yeah. was here yeah. for several months before it ever even made it uh, released in Canada, and it was the same here when we hooked up the other day. And I said, "Well, because we've had this for a, at least a month or two now, yeah. the thirteen, the Noble Collection, thirteen year old and mash, and uh, you you hadn't had it. Of course, you've got a, you've got a sample of it now, but you don't even yeah, have they, a bottle from the shelf yet. Getting it across the border can be difficult. So yeah, I have a sample which which they sent me, and I'll I'll get a a full bottle next time I'm in the states. Uh, I go fairly regularly to Augsburg. I have a post office box there. But yeah, it uh, you guys get them first and enjoy it because mm -hmm. Crown Royal the new Crown Royals are just totally phenomenal. Yes. Then there's a thing like this, which is called Crown Royal Blender Select, which you don't have and you never will have. Oh, now I want it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Am I laughing? <laughs> which is really another phenomenal whiskey. There'll be a review of that on my website before too long. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they're good to everybody. But uh, as I say, they've got, I think, 1.6 million barrels in Winnipeg and another 7.3 hundred thousand barrels in Montreal waiting to be made into Crown Royal and uh, they have a lot of just wonderful whiskeys to draw on. They really do. Mm. Hey, can I say something about Crown Royal Northern Harvest Rye? Yes. I remember when that, when that thing got, uh, was named the, the best uh, whiskey in the world or whatever, I got the first phone call I got was from my friend Dan Tulio at Canadian Club. He calls and he says, did you hear? Did you hear? We want best whiskey in the world. And I said, Dan, that was Crown Royal. He says, that was Canada. It was Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I love that. Yeah. And that's we just, won. It, we won. We got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we have, we got a goal. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Hold on. We got okay. another cowbell. But whiskey Sneerson. Thank you for the super yeah. chat. Appreciate it. $20 Canadian. Uh, so let's move on talking about the Crown Royal, the bourbon mash. Now this one, um, now I was one of the early adopters on this. I hadn't, this literally hit the shelves. I saw it. I think it was $19. Now called the blenders mash. I saw bourbon mash. I picked it up. I ran home and I tried it and I was so disappointed. Because? Because it, it's not, I mean, it's, on its own, it's a good whiskey. And had this been named Crown Royal Blenders, Blenders Select, really, or you know, if it had a different name, I would have had different expectations. So for you, the there's, name did change this, expectations. Yeah, yeah. And to me, there's it. It's not. It's the Bourbon Mash name did it. Hmm. It's a very sweet rye, though. I mean, just when you get into it, I mean, you get on the nose, you get sweet rye notes, and I and that's what I thought. I was like, well, it kind of smells like a lot of the Crown Royals do, you know, with the rye. Hmm. Well, I, to me, it has a, it's a, a lot of really typical bourbon notes, particularly the vanilla and the, the, uh, the uh, caramels and it's so some woodiness. It's not as robust as some of the, of the top bourbons. And I agree, if you're expecting bourbon to come out of that bottle, uh, you're going to be surprised if not disappointed. This yeah. is not bourbon. This is this is maybe well, let's say it's, it's a like a very approachable bourbon it's good whiskey it's good whiskey on its own but if you're a bourbon fan i would suggest you buy bourbon yes right. yeah. you know, seriously okay? <laughs> sure. you know and uh, if you're a crown royal fan get ready for a really pleasurable whack in the face with extra bourbon notes in your crown royal mm -hmm. so this i i really do enjoy this whiskey but l l it's not bourbon Right. But it's very bourbon-ish or bourbon-esque. But then right yeah. after that, we had the 13. You bought the 13-year-old Noble. Yeah, now even even after buying this one oh, yeah. and, and the bourbon mash and being not, I mean, being disappointed that it wasn't a bourbon when I saw the 13-year. And I think, well, I think uh, Mark Gillespie had, had said something about when he was at the distillery and he got to try this. Yeah, I think he'd had he had a release sample. anything. Right. And so I was like, well, okay, it was the Noble Collection, and it's the third, and it's a thirteen year. Right. Anything thirteen years has to be good. Yeah. Well, and you you love that. 
Yeah, but so I picked up. But I think these are two different beasts. Very much. How old? How many years is there? Is the non noble collection? I have no idea, but I would suspect it's six or seven. Okay. But I don't really don't know. And you know, it, again, because the different components may be different ages, it's kind of hard to say. I have the Canadian box here, so half of it's in different language. No, there's no there's no uh, no indications on the bottom. Yep. Quick, a uh, couple of cowbells. Whiskey, Whiskey throttle, throttle twice, or is twice, he? Or did he accidentally bump the button? Yeah, that let us know. He did it twice. Double hit at thirty four ninety nine twice. Yeah, if that's a isn't he accident. in Saskatchewan right now? If that's an accident, it's too late. It's too it's bad. Too late. You've committed. <laughs> Duke. He's been working in Moose Jaw. Yeah. And uh, his job there just finished up, though. He should be heading home, but he's not because Julia is on here commenting as well, and he's not home yet. Wow. And he's working right now, so he's just kind of tuning in and out. But. Got it. And the Jason Fisk, I've learned they also commented, I saw there's two Jason Fisk. So there's the Jason Fisk in Canada and the Jason Fisk in London. Wow. Two fists. Well, there's only one Davin to Kergamo, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> that is right. Well, and I did I did ask you because I've heard uh, Whiskey Lassie uh, pronounce your name and Mark Gillespie, but to make sure I had it right, to Kergamo. So you did confirm. I did check. Yes. So a question, sir. What, what Canadian whiskey do you think is about to really come to the forefront? Is there a is there a dark horse that you know about because of of your your inner knowledge that that you would point us toward? And you may not even be able to mention just because you know you're ahead of the curve. I think the most underrated Canadian whiskey today. It's fairly well known, but I think that it gets overshadowed by whiskeys like Lot Number Forty and things like that. But I think Gooderum and Warts is the the, the four grain, the, the 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 not the special Gooderum and Warts. That's another great whiskey. But for standard whiskeys that are always in the liquor store, Gooderum and Warts, I think is it just goes on and on and on and on. I truly love that whiskey. I think you need to watch what's happening with some of the other brands this fall. I have tasted some whiskeys that are coming this fall that are phenomenal, phenomenal, truly. You know, you think last year was a good year? Mm. They were just getting warmed up. Mm. So so I think, you need, but, but you know, right now, you know, yeah. Uh, I mean, there are others too. I, I haven't tasted the new, the new 40 Creek. But everything I hear it tells me that it, that's going to be a, a good one. And if people are close to to Grimsby, I mean, along the U.S. border, there, come on over to Forty Creek Weekend because they're going to have some some great whiskeys there. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Well, uh, we really like. We had a small sample of the Lot Forty, the Twelve Year Cast Strength that mm -hmm. came out last year. We both really liked it. But I hear there's an Eleven Year that's coming out that's even better. Well, it's, I wouldn't say it's, it's better. It may appeal more to some people. It is some, a lot more like the original Lot 40 that came out what, 20 years ago. To me, it, it has that same rugged roughness. It's not, it doesn't have the same polish that, uh, that some of the newer versions of Lot 40 have. But to say it's better, well, I think, you know, it's a matter of taste. You know, sure, really, sure. You know, and frankly, you, you Either one of those is fabulous whiskey. And by the way, I'll add a few drops of water to it. Mm. I'll find it just a little bit tastier with a bit of water. I've half tasted them both. And yes, they're, you just can't fault that whiskey. I mean, that's a, that's a Scotch drinker's whiskey. Too. Mm, or, you're talking my language. I actually got in a little trouble for that because we had the sample here uh -huh. and, and I, I figured you were done with it. So, yeah, yeah, I'm sure most people would think so. So yeah. you came back, you're like, where is that? And I'm like, what? I thought you were done with it. <laughs> and you were like, huh? I'm like, well, it, it's done with you because <laughs> I have finished it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and yeah, so I way. owe it. I've got to get some of that when I get a chance. Yeah. Real quick. Uh, 
We had Tom came in again. He's been uh, consistent every hour with a super wow. chat. Thank you, Tom. Almost missed my tip for He's this on, hour. On the phone with a brother. Yep. Wow. That's good to keep in touch with the brother, though. <laughs> yes. So, so love that cash strength. The uh, stock yeah. and barrel, the uh, the the hundred percent malted barley. We had the single the single malt cast strength, the single malt cast strength, which was good, really good, really good. I like that one. Now he mentioned the Gouter Ham and Warts. I and I haven't seen that in the states, and I don't know. Maybe some of the states are getting it. Mm. Yeah, Kansas, so. Kansas isn't. I can tell you that much. Now is the four grain though? Is it coming into the states? Do you know? Yeah, it is in some states. As far as I know, it's there now. But yeah, they've just got a new distributor down there, and I think you'll probably start to see it show up more and more. The stock and barrel rye, hundred percent rye, like like it's Barry Steen and Barry Bernstein who started this distillery called Stillwaters. Their brand name is Stock and Barrel, mm -hmm. and, and you know they always made single malt whiskey, but then they tried making a little bit of corn whiskey and a little bit of rye whiskey, and the rye whiskey was so phenomenal. It, it's now more than fifty percent of their production. And uh, they've had to expand their warehouse space because they're going gangbusters with this stuff. And it's kind of redefining the rye whiskey space because these are flavors that you don't get in the traditional Canadian American 100% rye or, or high rye whiskeys. <clears throat> they've got you know lovely new fruity flavors. <clears throat> it's re it's really kind of redefined. And, and it's, it's, it's stock and barrel 100% rye that got me thinking. You know what? We've been really, you know, way too narrow in our focus and what flavors we can get from rye because st the stock and barrel rye, it doesn't taste like what you might expect if you're drinking Rittenhouse 100, which which I do drink regularly. Hmm. But and then and then you know, and then, of course then I started looking at more rice and some of the European rice you know, like are full of lemons like lemon curd and things like this. You never taste that in a Canadian or American rye, and so. The, really, like I think that the day is going to come when rye whiskey is going to have the same breadth of flavor as a single malt barley whiskey, a single malt the scotch, where you get this huge range because there's so much more you can do with rye than what we're doing with it right now. And Barry and Barry with their their stock and barrel 100% rye really kind of opened my eyes to that. It was I, I just took it for granted. This is what rye tastes like, you know, spicy with some lilacs, you know, and a bit of dark fruit, and you know. Mm. So, yeah, I love that stock and barrel. More cowbell. Cowbell for Moe's Chun. Moe's Thanks, Chun. Moe. Now, um, what would you say, would you want to, what's your favorite Canadian whiskey? That, oh. Or let's, the, let's not favorite, <laughs> the best. What's the best Canadian whiskey? Do you want, no? I don't think, I think that's, well, I'll, I'll let what? you, I don't know. That narrows it down to one. I mean, I think he's, uh, well, I don't know. We'll let it, we'll let him answer. Top three. Top three. What's <laughs> your top thing? You know, I, I, this is a bit of a cliche to say that the whiskey that's in my in my hand is the one I like the best. And right now, it's the Caramel Bourbon Mash. But there's a whiskey that Mark Gillespie asked me this a long time ago on Whiskey Cast. One whiskey, and it was a Centennial 15 year old that was released in 1967. It, and it is still a phenomenal whiskey. And you know, um, I said that on Whiskey Cast, and you know, you know. Don Livermore, who is the, the master blender at Hiram Walker, he was listening to Whiskey Cast. You know what that guy did? And I honestly, I I, I just I, I'm so Greg, you know, touched by this. He went back to 1967 in the recipe book and he made another bottle of the Centennial 15 year old. Really? And he gave it to me when I visited him at the distillery. And you know what? I haven't opened it yet. But mm. that whiskey, that that, that, that whiskey, it's, it's just phenomenal. To me, that's up there with Black Bullmore. Well, it, it wow. might just have Crown Royal in it. <laughs> How do you, you need to open it and try it? <laughs> Don, wouldn't, Don, Don wouldn't put Crown Royal in it. <laughs> Some of those old Crown Royals are phenomenal. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so I ask a lot of people what my favorite genre I call it is uh, sherried scotches, Barch's peated scotches. Love What's your smoking. favorite genre of whiskey? What would you find yourself going to three out of four nights? Well, you know what? I like, I really, really do love the, the connoisseur uh, quality Canadian whiskeys, but I also like. You know, the whiskeys that you just sit and drink and 
think don't think about you know, I think that you know I, you can spend way too much time thinking about the whiskey that's sure. in your glass. So you know, I like drinking Canadian Club. I really do. Hmm. I love like like say Forty Creek, Forty Creek Copper Pot. You know, blows me away. It's really it's really really great whiskey. Yeah. It tastes good and it feels good in your mouth, and you don't have to put a lot of mental energy into to teasing out all the different notes. I do enjoy that. Crown Royal Deluxe. Crown Royal Deluxe, I like that. And uh, yeah. there's also Canadian 83, which used to be Seagram's 83. Yeah. Or, or, or something like Golden Wedding. Nobody who watches your show enjoys Golden Wedding. <laughs> but, uh, you know, because it's kind of like the whiskey. It's a cheap whiskey that people in Newfoundland drink by the, you know, by, by the gallon. I'm glad but you clarified the, that was a whiskey because Golden Wedding might have different terms oh, no. in different what regions that's all right, that's all i meant my actually my neighbor loves canadian club sherry cask which has gone away did they quit making it he's been looking for it um do you know did they quit making the the sherry cask canadian club uh as to my knowledge that it has been discontinued and i don't think it was entirely their decision to do that i think that it just became too much of a nightmare with government red tape oh really yeah you do do some reclassification of hazardous goods and things like that, which included cherry casks. Hmm. <laughs> really? Let's do it. Uh, a couple, I, I want to, before I forget, cause I've been forgetting, I had a list of some other whiskey oh. tubers that give I just want to mention. I want to yeah. give them a nod. And the last few shows we forgot about mm -hmm. um, a few here real quick, go check out malted in Montreal. If you haven't, he's been tuning in throughout the day. Eric Waite has a channel malted man cave. Bye -bye. The Jason Whiskey Wise, No Nonsense Whiskey, Food Quig. Go check all those guys out. Yeah, a lot of you guys are that are watching already check these guys out. If you haven't heard of them, go give them a look. Uh, see what they're putting out. There's a lot of us on Whiskey Tuber on Whiskey Tubers on YouTube, uh, putting out whiskey content. Let's do uh, and Davin, think of a. Uh, I've got coin three twenty five here. We want to give away. Right, okay. To people that are watching, think of a trivia question, something you've talked about during the show and ask, and whoever gets the post the first answer, the, the answer first will win coin 325. Has Canadian whiskey always been light? First one to answer. We're watching the comments here. They'll flood in. And then we're also in a little bit going to do no, Fisk, Jason no, Fisk says no, Parker, no, no. The no's are flying in. Hold on. We got Gregor says yes. Gregor was the first yes. And Jason Fisk was the first no. Which way does it go, sir? Absolutely not. It, no, no, <laughs> no, no. That, that question was so easy. It was. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I give Gregor a nod. Just I think he wanted to stand against the crowd. He just had to get a, a, a yes in there. Fisk wins. Jason Fisk wins the uh, coin 325. Number three. Which Jason Fisk? Yeah, which one? Is that's that Canadian. No, nope, oh, that's, that's Canadian, Canadian. Jason right. Fisk by his uh, symbol on there. Shoot us an email at scotch, scotchtestdummies at gmail.com. So we can get Jason. Your, your mailing address. Now we've got a Patreon coin to give away. Yes. Ready? Yep. Hey, Siri, generate a random number between 1 and 104. She didn't get something there. Hey Siri, generate a random number between one and 104. No, nope, Siri's not. Oh my God, we're being now. failed. Yep. Well, ask Alexa. Yeah, if we did. My Alexa's Alexa. upstairs. I hey do Siri, have Alexa. <laughs> generate a random number between one and 104. Yeah, Siri's not working. Wow. Right let me Let's try pull mine. up a random gen number generator. Siri, pick a number between one. Okay, I found this on the Wow, it's see? all down. All yeah. right, hold on. Here we go. See, that's what keeps us honest. When they hear Siri say the number, they know we're not just like randomly picking somebody. Here we go. One and 104. 66. 66. When, uh, uh, when all else fails, go back to technology. Bam. Go back to technology. <laughs> Siri's not technology. Yeah, that's that's why. Yeah, Ransom sixty-six. Siri's his buddy is 
just Eric. Eric. We'll have to go well, to we'll figure that out. Patreon and pull up Eric and get his email address right. and contact him. I've got it quoted. Well, we'll find Eric. Eric has won. All right. Are you working on? I mean, this is this is phenomenal work. Or do you have another book in the works now? Because this has been so popular. Have they come and said, "Do another one, sir. Do another one." The yes. Yeah, so the answer is yes. I have another book well underway right now, and Beautiful. I should be able to announce what it is within the next couple of weeks. I'm just waiting until. The publisher puts the notification in the trade journals. Scott and I like to say that nobody's watching right now. This is our secret. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's not 104 people tuning in at this moment. You can share it right now. <laughs> no, it's not about the time I ran for prime minister. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a story. Yeah. Now, what about, so this is, Edition two. I don't know when edition one came out or mm. what the time was. When I mean, I I, I would assume the, there will be an edition yeah. three. You'll do updates. Yep. Because this was second edition, and then what? How what was updated between the two? What do you update in it? Well, the the first one came out in May of 2012. Okay. Second edition came out in um, in October of 2017. So it was a little more than five years between them. Yes, the publisher has already been talking to me about doing a new edition, an update. Um, and what they what they want to, you know, they don't like to do a new edition until at least uh, thirty percent of the content will be all new. In this one, of course, we we you know talked about the new micro distilleries, which didn't even exist when I when the first one came out. Uh, Took, of course, changed all the tasting notes. So there were what 110 tasting new tasting notes in there. Uh, we, uh, you know, did the map map of where all the distilleries are. Um, updated this the uh, the chapter on where flavors come from, how flavors develop. Uh, completely rewrote the chapter on tasting and how to taste whiskey and uh, things like that. And of course, looking at the future, the future is new. So and of course, every chapter has a few changes in it. The Forty Creek chapter is, you know, significantly updated because you know the distillery was sold. In the meantime, uh, I think it will be much sooner than five years before the uh, third edition comes out because things have changed rapidly in the last um, in the last uh, even just year. And I think that uh, the, if the publisher is talking about it now, I think that that shows that there's some momentum to, to get it going. So yeah, it'll be coming out. Uh, Probably when, after my next book comes out, they'll probably go back to everyone. Yep, and Canadian whiskey is hot right now. It really, really is. It's yeah, it's really gratifying to me because you know when I started doing this, I was the only person reviewing Canadian whiskey. All my friends thought I was daft. <laughs> what are you wasting your time on that for? I was the only person doing it, and even when my book first came out, there was nobody. There were none of the distilleries were even promoting their whiskey back then. You know, mm. and then. Now, the last five or six years, it's just taken off, and we've had seen growth every single year. We've seen like about 2% growth in sales every year, but at the high end, it's like 17, 18, 19% growth in sales year after year after year. So, yeah, Canadian whiskey really is <clears throat> getting very hot, very popular. And when people taste, it, taste the good stuff, because my rule of thumb is if you spend $5 more, you get so much more Canadian whiskey, so much more. So, uh, yeah, it's hot right now. It's really good. And it's, it's really gratifying to have been part of that growth and to get recognition from major people in the industry for the contribution that my book has made and all that I've made, too. So You so. bet. Well, you're a trendsetter. You're ahead, of the, you're ahead of the curve. I was ahead of the curve. That wasn't by design. I just happened to be. That's the best way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, sir. My pleasure. And uh, those, I was just gonna say for those yeah. watching on Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, what's your put out your username real quick on Instagram or can they uh, how do they find you? At Davin D E K D A V I N D E K. That's on Instagram and on Twitter. Beautiful, beautiful. And they can get your book. Is I know Amazon and where else, or I assume Amazon, where can they find yeah. it? Amazon has it, all of the online sellers have it. 
Uh, in Canada, every chapter's Indigo store has it. Most bookstores in Canada have it. Uh, I think some of the bigger stores in in America have it as well. All the specialty stores have it. So yeah, it's uh, it's readily available yeah, on Amazon for sure. You can deliver right away all around the world. Amazon UK, Amazon.com, on you know wherever. Beautiful. And are you still going around and doing signings? We love the fact that uh, a fan sent us this after meeting with you and getting it signed. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm still doing that. It happens more during whiskey season, which is in the fall. Right now, I'm kind of in my off season. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, Devin, thank you for joining us. And um, what you've got so much information. You're so enthusiastic about Canadian whiskey. We need to do another. Yeah, live we would stream. love. We do live streams with single guests, not in a whole broad show on Sundays in the future. If you're willing, we'd love to have you on again. I would absolutely love to. This has been more fun. I can't believe it's 45 minutes already. Holy yeah, I know. Yeah, when you get your next book, uh, we would love to have you on, and we'll discuss it. How's that? Well, yeah, let's yeah. do that. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, thanks okay. to everybody that tuned in. Stay yes. tuned in the 15 Cheers. minutes. We'll be live back on uh, YouTube again with. Uh, Janine Rocked from yes. Clear Creek Distillery. Yes. Scotch it, you Scotch gods. Slauncha. <laughs> Thanks, sir. We're going to hang on for a